I think that it'll be a niche thing for a while, electric cars. <laughs> All right, Kilmer heads, I'm back again with another highly requested topic, Scotty's take on Tesla. Once again, I realize that his take on a topic usually stems from a deeper hatred of something else. In this case, it's electric cars. So, electric cars with batteries. I think this has more to do with his personal job security than actually hating the technology. There is little to repair on an electric car. So, good old Uncle Scotty thinks hydrogen is the future. Let's see why he is once again wrong. You can actually run any internal combustion engine off of hydrogen if you really want to. It's nothing to convert this old silica to run on natural gas or on hydrogen. Oh boy, this episode's gonna be a doozy. First of all, does Scotty seem sober here? Actually run any internal combustion engine off of hydrogen. So one of Scotty's first points here is that hydrogen is a miracle fuel that any car can run on. Either that or his Celica is a miracle car that could run on any fuel. I'm not sure yet. And it's actually a lot more efficient than using gasoline. The gasoline has to be sprayed to make a vapor to burn. The gas is already a gas. You just add it in and ignite it and away you go. <sighs> Lord Scotty. Alright, so I made this channel because he oftentimes spills out some misinformation about cars and sometimes it's dangerous. But this time, he's leading his viewers way off track on a topic with literally knowing almost nothing about it. So first, not needing air to mix doesn't make it more efficient. But anyways, hydrogen needs air, it needs an oxidizer. That's why space shuttles have an oxygen tank and a hydrogen tank. So even if he could easily convert a modern car to hydrogen. The problem is there's no point. We'll get into how inefficient hydrolysis is later. Uh, but a full hydrogen conversion is not that simple. So hydrogen burns hotter, so you need better cooling, a better cooling system, uh, higher temperature oil. The pressure is different, so you'll need to adjust the vacuum system. Uh, hydrogen is a gas, so you'll need a different injection system. So no, it's, it's not that easy. I will say there are some cars that are built for both. The Hydrogen 7 or the 7 Hydrogen by BMW was one, but that's a car built for this purpose. It is not a conversion. The only problem with converting stuff to run on gas, either natural gas or hydrogen, is you have to store the stuff and you need very good, safe containers. God, his hand movements, they kill me. So the fuel tank issue was probably the easiest fix for the engineers to figure out. Uh, hydrogen is really pressurized and it's light, so if there's ever a problem like a puncture or something, the gas just shoots straight out. Here's a video of Toyota shooting one of their hydrogen tanks with a gun. Let's give you some idea. Uh, it most likely doesn't ignite. And if it does, it doesn't surround the car and explode like gasoline. It's just it's more of a jet stream, so it's actually it's actually safer than gasoline when when ignited. Actually, check out this old test video. Hydrogen and a car fueled with gasoline. The hydrogen tank empties in less than two minutes, and the flame goes out with virtually no damage to the vehicle. Yeah, so the tank, whatever, it's not a big deal. Who really cares? They have it figured out. That's the least of the worries. And also, um... This type of fuel is the least preferable method, and he points this out. The, the preferred method is a fuel cell, and he talks about the fuel cell, so let's, look, let's check that out. Now the second type of hydrogen cars are what people normally think about. It's the hydrogen fuel cell car. Okay, cool. Uh, how do those work, Scotty? Can you tell us more about it? They take the hydrogen gas, they run it through a fuel cell, which turns it into electricity, which runs the electric motor on an electric car. Uh, okay, so like magic or something? Uh, those hand motions and that pause, you can kind of tell he has no idea how a fuel cell actually works. Uh, but I could be wrong. Yeah, okay, so the title of the video is Scotty Hates Electric Cars, but he's actually praising them here. But the key is he hates battery-driven electric cars. But why does he hate Tesla and battery-powered cars so much? 
The hydrogen fuel cell cars are actually a much better idea than a car that has a giant battery to run an electric motor. And that's for two main reasons. One, there's only a limited amount of lithium in the world. There's probably not enough to make the giant lithium batteries for hundreds of millions of people to drive electric cars. And it's always going to take a reasonably long amount of time to recharge an electric car battery. So charging versus refueling and lithium supply. That's it? Just two points? No? Nah? Okay. First of all, Scotty, pick up your antifreeze bottle. That's gross. That's disgusting. It's toxic, man. Well, for lithium supply, that's an easy one. This article is from Bloomberg. It says we might use up to 1% of our entire lithium supply over the next 12 years. That means we haven't even hit 1% yet, and over the next dozen years, we might use up 1%. So we're not going to run out of lithium anytime soon. And with the rate of improvement, uh, with the technology and battery improvement, I would be more worried about running out of helium and gold for computer production and, you know, any other metal for that, for that matter. And just an aside, something completely unrelated, but look at Scotty's garage. Does it give anybody else anxiety? Oh, God. I wish they put him on an episode of Hoarders or something. Okay, anyway, so on to charging. If you've got just a normal 112 plug in your house and you got a big Tesla, it can take three and a half days to charge that battery up. All right, so if you're charging a Tesla with a standard wall outlet, you're an idiot. Up, up. After forking all that money for a new Tesla, I don't think many Tesla owners are going to skimp out over the extra grand for a wall charging unit. And if you dual charge, it can cut charging time down to about four hours. It's, it's getting better every year with every model, too. And even at one of those Tesla super stations, if you're almost out of electricity, it's going to take you almost an hour to charge it back up. Whoa, a whole hour. So at the rate of electric car adoption and improvement, they are becoming increasingly more affordable. That means more people will be driving them. It's not just going to be a luxury niche product like Scotty likes to call it. Uh, charging at a superstation, it costs about six cents per mile when you're driving. Uh, you get a full charge depending on, on where you're at, uh, 10 to 12 dollars, I think. Um, so that's like half the price per mile of most cars. Check this chart out. Um, it's significant enough to wait for a charge while you eat lunch. You know, you wait an hour and you cut your driving price per mile down by half. That's cool. But here's the thing, most people don't deplete their car, their car battery life in a day. Normally people don't drive more than yeah, about 30 miles a day. Even if you work 100 miles away, you can still make it to work and home and still not use up all your battery. You can fully charge it at night during non-peak hours so it's cheaper, you save more. So unless you're Scotty, then it'll take a week to charge, but for most people they can charge it overnight. Now the hydrogen fuel cell car, of course, is a non-polluting vehicle. The hydrogen goes in, out comes water vapor and electricity. So they don't pollute the air at all. They're the cleanest vehicle you can get your hands on. As we're about to see, hydrogen uses much more energy to produce. So if you're charging your car from like a coal burning plant, like a lot of America is, that it certainly isn't greener than using just an electric car. Okay, so let's get into it. So most of this information is coming from a, this great channel called Real Engineering. I'll put a link below in the description, and he's nerded out on this subject. Because he's a freaking nerd. Okay, let's listen. Fully charging a Tesla Model 3 with a 75 kilowatt hour battery costs between 10 and $12, depending where you live. With a rated range of 500 kilometers, that's between 2 and 2.4 cent per kilometer. So I think that's even cheaper than what I said before. Uh, 2 to 2.4 cents per kilometer, that's like 3, 4 cents per mile. That's really cheap. The hydrogen from this station cost $85 to fill a 5 kilogram tank of the Toyota Morais on site, which had a range of 480 kilometers. That's 17.7 cents per kilometer, 8 times the price. And here lies the problem. Ooh, that's expensive. Uh, so that's about 30 cents per mile, and there isn't a single car in America you can get new on a car lot, and it's that expensive to drive per mile. No, it's not that there isn't any hydrogen. The ocean's full of H2O, you know? Yeah, and you got to get it out, and that costs money. Anyway, I'm not going to get super bogged down into details here. 
uh, I would highly recommend this channel and this video, but this section sums it up pretty well, I think. So in the best case scenario for hydrogen, using the most efficient means of production and transport, we lose 20% of energy during PEM electrolysis and around 13% for compression and storage, amounting to a 33% loss. In other systems, this could be as much as 56%. For battery power up to this point, we've lost just 6% to the grid and recharging bringing our best case efficiency difference to 27% and our worst case to 50%. So basically, through extracting the hydrogen, compressing it or cooling it, and transporting it, you're looking at a massive deficit compared to electric batteries. But that's not all. If we add up all these inefficiencies and compare current generation batteries to the best and worst case scenario for current gen hydrogen, we can see how they measure up. Even with the best case scenario, not taking into account any transport due to on-site production, and assuming very high electrolysis efficiency of 80%, and assuming a high fuel cell efficiency of 80%, hydrogen still comes out at less than half the efficiency. The worst case scenario is even worse off. So basically what he's saying is, even if you have the best case scenario with on-site production, you're still using over twice the energy you get back from the hydrogen. Comparatively, electric generation and electric storage and batteries, you lose some energy, but nowhere near as much as you do with hydrogen. But of course, there's a the problem of getting the hydrogen. It would take a massive paradigm shift in our society to move from an oil-based economy to one that's based on creating hydrogen. No, there's just no point. So if you're just going to generate the electricity from solar, wind, hydroelectric, nuclear, coal, whatever, and you have to store it some way, and you have two choices, battery or hydrogen, it makes way more sense to store it in a battery. Now, there are some cases where hydrogen makes sense. Uh, I, I think maybe in the future it would make more sense in airplanes and aircraft, but eh, not in cars. So in my honest opinion, I think it would be awesome if hydrogen took off and it was efficient and we could utilize it in a, in a cheap and sensible way, but I don't see that happening anytime in the near future. But we're making strides just like we did with battery, and as long as solar and wind improves, I think, you know, a mixture of battery and hydrogen makes sense, but uh, probably not in cars. I mean, you look at the Tesla and, you know, it's, it's a sports car. It's faster than most production sports cars on the road now. You know, 0 to 60, the new model, I think, in, you know, under two seconds. It's insane, and there's no hydrogen power car that can touch that. And yeah, so I really just don't see hydrogen taking off for cars. And you know, if it takes off in other fuel sources and in remote places and space, then that's great, fantastic, go for it. But it's definitely not the future for cars. Sorry, Scotty, you're wrong. Too bad. Well, anyway, that's it. Sorry, this video is a little longer. And it's a little heavier, uh, less joking, a lot more technical stuff. Uh, that's how she goes. But if you agree, disagree, tell me in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And please remember to thumbs up, like the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. And ring that bell.